Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm Jia Zhang, a senior researcher of Microsoft Research Asia. I feel very happy to have the chance to share our latest results about how to solve critical sustainability problems with AI technology. Microsoft has always been a company with high social responsibility. In 2020, we announced our carbon neutral strategy and committed to achieve negative carbon emissions by 2030 and eliminate all historical carbon emissions by 2050. There is also a 1 billion funds set aside to tackle climate change. Over the past two years, more than $5 million has been spent on climate change. We have also achieved exciting results. For example, we have reduced 2.5 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions in total. Another example is that we have invested in many projects that have benefited more than 90,000 people and won the U.S. water prize. There are efforts across Microsoft. As researchers, we are also contributing to sustainability in our own way. In particular, the rapidly developed AI technology is shining brightly in various fields and transforming traditional domains rapidly. This brings us the possibility of using AI technology to solve changes in sustainability. Today, I'd like to present three of our latest efforts. The first one is related to environmental pollution. We have developed a deep learning method for atmosphere modeling. The second one is related to clean energy, which is a graph neural work for solar power supply forecasting. The last one is about carbon storage. We developed a new network for hydro simulation, which is crucial for safety storage of carbon dioxide. Now, let me briefly introduce our work about deep learning for atmosphere modeling. It's a collaboration work with Tsinghua University. Let's start by looking at the chemical transport model, shorted as CTM, which is widely used in atmosphere science. We all know that atmosphere science is concerned with changes in proteins of the air. The formation of many proteins is very complex. Not all of them are directly emitted by humans' activity. The CTM is just a tool to help atmosphere researchers to study the concentration of various proteins based on all kinds of natural or man-made emissions. Basically, it uses three parts of information as input, emission data, weather data, and geographic data. The CTM system will simulate the proteins concentration information of the next moment through complex physical diffusion model and chemical model according to the information of the last moment. This system is very important. It plays an important role in air quality forecasting, environmental regulation, and atmosphere research. However, the whole system is very complex and time-consuming. In China region alone, it would take weeks to simulate one-year data with a resolution of 23 km and a time step of one hour. In addition, the entire system is not differentiable, which makes many reward control, such as emission adjustments, problem difficult to implement. Inspired by these limitations, we want to design a neural network-based model to replace the traditional CTM system. We call this model Neural CTM. The model design is challenging. For one thing, it has a very complicated spatial temporal prediction problem that all the potent concentration around the whole region should be predicted for a long time. For another, we have to deal with multimodal data, including temporal data and static graph data. After trial and errors, we finally designed the following multi-branch network structure. For the emissions and the meteorology data, we adopt the RNN and UNET for temporal and spatial representation learning, respectively. For the other information, we adopt simple multi-layer perceptron. The learned information will be concreted together for final forecasting. 
We have trained our model on the data of China region provided by Tsinghua University. It shows around 95% accuracy, while achieved more than 1,000 times speed up. We applied our model to emission inventory estimation. This is a very important inward task. Real-world emissions are extremely inaccurate, leading to inconsistency between model results and the real-world pollution observations. It also leads to inefficiency of environmental regulation. So how to collect the emission data is an important research topic. In our solution, we freeze the pre-trained model parameters, reversely calculate the gradient of the input variables according to the difference between the model outputs and the real-world observations. Then we update the input variables with these gradients until converged. In this way, we are able to refine the emission data and significantly reduce model error caused by emission inventory. Our method is much faster than manual correction. It will take several months for an expert to correct the data, but now it can be done in just a few hours. Besides, our results are more accurate and objective. Okay, this is a brief introduction about our neural CTM model. More details can be found in our paper on the general GMD. In addition, it needs to emphasize that the neural CTM model has great potential in various applications. For example, the model could be extended to provide accurate carbon emission estimation, helping governments design more effective carbon natural strategies. It could also be used to build real-time emissions monitoring system to help the environmental regulations. Now is the second work, which is about the solar power forecasting. We use the graph neural network to achieve faster and more accurate power supply prediction. It's well known that renewable energy is the future of human society. There are many sources of renewable energy, including wind, solar, water, and geothermal. However, this renewable energy has been considered as junk energy. The essential reason is that the supply of this energy is very unstable. This poses a huge challenge to the transmission and supply of electricity. So, if we can predict the power generation more accurately, we can greatly improve the availability of renewable energy. Of course, accurate predictions are difficult. The data distribution is very complex, while the data point is sparse. In addition, a long time interval for prediction makes the problem more difficult. Based with these problems, we propose a new prediction model with dynamic relation, discovery, and utilization. This model can automatically map hidden relationships from data and find the most appropriate relationship to assist prediction according to the node's own situation, so as to improve the accuracy of prediction. As shown in this slide, it mainly considers two paths, auto-relationship discovery and attentional relationship aggregation. Look at the auto-relationship discovery module at first. We first set up learnable edge connections randomly between the nodes, then samples were token through Gumball Softmax. The sampled edge are used to participate in the next step of learning and the gradient calculation. In this way, the random weights on the edge can be updated and finally, multiple implicit relationships between nodes can be learned. By discovering the relationship between nodes, the problem of data sparse can be effectively solved. The second part, that the attentional relation aggregation module, is used to decide which relationships are more important for forecasting. Here, we introduce the idea of transformer. For each node, its own information is used as a query. We also construct the corresponding k and value matrices for all the relationships learned in the previous model. Then we dynamically determine which relationships need to pay more attention to 
based on the query k value framework. As we can see, with these two modules, we can effectively solve the problem of complex data distribution and data sparsity so that we can produce more accurate long-term prediction. We have tested our model in a public solar power dataset, and the model achieves very high correlation with the ground truth. This is the best result as far as we know, and the model is much faster than other mainstream networks. Besides, through ablation study, we show that both auto relationship discovery and attentional relationship aggregation are very important. The accuracy will significantly drop when any module is disabled. For more details, please refer to our paper on Archive. Okay, let me introduce the last work. That's hydro simulation with neural network in carbon storage. This is the collaboration project with the University of Tokyo. Climate change has become one of the most crucial global challenges for human beings. Faced with this change, many countries around the world have their goals and corresponding paths towards carbon neutrality. However, the renewable energy haven't been mature enough to satisfy the power demand. Fossil fuels will remain dominant for a long time. This means there will still be plenty of carbon emissions for the future. Given this situation, carbon capture and storage have become an indispensable option for the goal of carbon neutrality. One important technology in carbon storage is to store carbon dioxide and the seabed, but there is a risk that carbon dioxide will leak out because of geological hazards. In fact, we often hear about the reports of ocean earthquakes, underwater volcanic eruptions, and so on. All of these will affect the safety storage of carbon dioxide. Not only does this render private storage effects ineffective, but it can cause more serious problems. Large leakage of carbon dioxide over a short period of time can cause pH value changes in the oceans and contribute to global warming seriously. So how to store carbon dioxide safely is a very important research topic in carbon storage. To prevent the stored carbon dioxide from the risk of leakage, scientists turn to the idea of hydrate. To be more concrete, a layer of hydrate with the permeability is small enough can be considered as a solid cap rock. If the salt of cap rock can be naturally formed up above the storage area, it can effectively prevent carbon leakage. To study the growth of hydrate, we need to accurately simulate the whole process. Similar to the CTM system, the hydrate simulation is an extremely complicated physical and chemical processes. To ensure the accuracy of the simulation, traditional numerical simulation must consider simulations at multi scales simultaneously. This process is very complicated and time consuming. One minute of hydrate involvement can take three minutes calculation. This makes the simulation completely meaningless. To accelerate the speed, we propose the deep hydrate solution. Our solution is a little complicated, but the general idea is to construct multiple network components in both macro and meso scale, that's the deep macro and deep meso modules. Both these two modules are built based on RNN, while their input and functions are different. The deep macro module is used to capture the coarse-grained information. Its output is fed to the deep meso module together with fine-grained information for more accurate simulation. The effects of our model is remarkable. We have tested our model on real-world data. It delivers a 1,000-fold acceleration with almost the same accuracy with numerical simulator. With our model, fine-grained high-precision simulation becomes possible. If you are interested in this work, please refer to our paper for more details. To sum up, we have discussed our latest work in the areas of atmosphere modeling, solar power forecasting, 
and hydro simulation in carbon storage. We use AI technology to solve a lot of problems that are difficult or even impossible to solve with traditional methods. Through our results, we can easily draw the conclusion that well-designed AI models can lead to huge improvements in efficiency and performance in traditional domains. In the future, we will continue to explore the potential of AI in the field of sustainability to promote the progress of sustainability research. This is a reference to what's being shared today. The first two papers are both officially published and available online. The last one has been accepted and will be published soon. Okay, that's all my sharing. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to contact with me if you are interested in our work or have any questions. By the way, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce the MSI Fellowship. Its mission is to discover the racing stars of computer science-related and interdisciplinary research in Asia-Pacific region, empower outstanding PhD students to do better research, inherit the research genes of Microsoft Research Fellows. As you can see, it is open to all students related to computational science, including computational physics, chemistry, biology, and the environment. You can scan the QR code for more details. Okay, that's all. Thank you again.